If you've been staying up to date with the latest design trends, you may have seen this little vintage stool popping up everywhere. They come in so many shapes and sizes, have countless uses, and are absolutely stunning. Who would have thought a tiny little stool could take over the internet? Seriously, did not see that one coming. But the only thing wrong with this trend is that it can cost hundreds of dollars. So today I'm going to be showing you how I made mine by using just a few things that I already had. I'll be showing you all my tricks and tips, showing you my mistakes, and we're going to end up with this beautiful faux vintage stool. So if you're interested in seeing this inexpensive on a budget vintage stool, go ahead and sit back, relax, don't forget to subscribe and like, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, welcome to day one of putting this little stool together. It's early in the morning, we're tired, there are animals everywhere, but let's start talking about how we're going to put this stool together, some tools, materials, and stuff like that. So because of this style that's like super trendy right now, and personally it's my style, is sort of like an aged, sort of beat up looking stool, we're going to be using some old barn wood. You could also use like some actual new lumber if you wanted more of a modern look, or you could even beat it up if you really needed to. I also feel like some yard sales, sometimes have like old barn wood and stuff available so try to use your resources you can usually find something pretty cheap maybe even check Facebook marketplace or something like that so that's the type of wood we're going to be using today the tool that we're going to be using is a table saw you could also use maybe like a miter saw or if you have the strength for it you could even do a hand saw where just like hand saw it yourself now honestly it wouldn't be too too bad um, just because it's such a small project and so far I have a rough I oh my gosh Coco and so far I have a rough idea of how I want to put everything together but of course I'll be showing you guys the actual steps and how to make it yourself at home so hopefully this is gonna go super well and we are going to have a beautiful antique stool for way less than if you bought it online like I said we're going to be using a table saw today you could also use a miter saw as I said earlier this one is a little bit more finicky it's quite old as you you can see but it worked really well for this sort of project that doesn't need to be perfect so here's the wood that I'm using we just literally found this up in our little hayloft and we just found a bunch of old wood as I said you could use some newer wood and you could just sort of beat it up and make it look vintage but this just makes it a little bit easier so we had those four pieces for our legs and also this piece that's actually from our old deck that used to be off the back of our house it's actually red on that back side you'll be able to see that a little bit later so this part's going to be for the top and then the four legs are obviously going to be for the legs so we just want to make sure we have enough wood to do so so first we're going to be measuring out the top of the stool i believe i ended up going with about 15 inches this really just depends on your space i really just wanted to put this at the end of my bed in my college room to hold my backpack and books and stuff like that so didn't want it to be super super long or anything like that so i measured that off and then i'm just using a straight edge to get our measurement here and now we're going to cut it to size and we just got to be really careful to stay in that line of course there are ways to like put a guard on the side to get like a perfect cut but my dad wanted to do it by hand and honestly it doesn't really matter this is a really good sort of first project to do with wood because it's super imperfect it does not need to be neat and beautiful and perfect with angles and anything like that so now we're going to figure out how long we want our legs I ended up going with about 20 inches like I said didn't want anything too tall didn't want anything super big so I did that with all of my legs here and one thing that I would suggest doing at this step is sort of double checking your measurements we didn't do that we ended up having to get a different piece of wood and sort of start over from that area but even if you did not a big deal we're just gonna mark that off and then use our straight edge to make that in line so that we can cut it Now 
Now that all of our legs are cut to size, I wanted to add a slight angle to the top and bottom so that way it kind of came out. The legs sort of came out. So I'm making a little template here. I'm using a little piece of cardboard. This happens to be a yogurt box. And I'm going to be making a straight edge and sort of making it the width of our piece of wood. So I'm just cutting a little square here. I'm actually gonna cut it down into a little rectangle. And I ended up making a rectangle that was roughly half an inch, maybe even a little bit smaller than that to sort of fit on that edge. And then I'm gonna cut from corner to corner so we have a perfect little triangle. And this may seem like a super tiny little angle, but this little angle is going to give us the most beautiful character. And it's actually gonna be a lot more dramatic of an angle than you think. So I'm going to be using the template to put at the end of each board. I'm doing it on both sides, making sure that the angles are parallel to each other so that obviously they're going the same way. We don't want them going the opposite ways because obviously that's not gonna work very well. Now that we have our angles traced out, it's time to cut everything. We're just going to be using the same tool, the table saw for this. And one thing I do recommend at this stage, which we did mess up, I did tell you <laughs> I was going to show you all the mistakes and learn from the mistakes that I made, but we ended up cutting them. And when we put them on the stool, we realized they didn't match up. So I would suggest making sure that all of your pieces, you kind of put them up next to each other. You kind of make sure that they're all relatively the same. Again, doesn't need to be perfect but I think we had a piece of wood that had a little bit of misshaping or something to it so it didn't quite match up so not a big deal at all but just something to keep in mind and now that everything is all cut down and we have all of our pieces it's time for the most tedious not fun part which is sanding now as you can see the little sander was quite powerful so my dad put a couple of clamps on the table to make sure that it wasn't gonna slide around and I just took all of the paint off of that one side of our wood Wood, and then I just sanded everything else down and later you're gonna see I used a 150 grit to make sure that it was nice and smooth even though this is a vintage stool I did want the sides to be nice and smooth so that way if you pick it up or you bump into it it's not going to hurt your fingers or whatever anything like that so we're going to do that to all of our pieces and then I'll show you how we put it together pieces are nice and smooth I'm gonna show you how I made it more simple to put together like I said we're not expert sort of craftsmen or anything we just sort of put this together haphazardly and there's my cat say hello to Stella um but essentially I ended up starting with doing one inch marks all along the bottom that changes a little bit because I realized with the angle on the legs I kind of wanted to push everything towards the center as you can see I'm doing here so that the legs at the end sort of meet up with the edge of the stool at the edge of the top if that makes sense so on the long sides I measured in one inch and then on the shorter sides I measured in three inches and then I ended up using the straight edge to sort of make our lines and I made the lines all the way across that way they would intersect and sort of show us where the corners of the legs are going to be so nothing super exact but I thought that this was the easiest most efficient way to figure out exactly where everything was going to go And then once that was finished, I did take the extra step and I sort of put the legs on it that you're gonna see here in a minute. And then I just sort of traced around those. So that way we knew pretty much exactly where they needed to go. Again, not an exact science, but it did make it a little bit easier to assemble. And then once I did that, I did sort of a mirror image on the other side. So I did the three inches, the one inches, and then I just made a little circle mark where everything was going to go. That way when we're drilling everything in, we know about where everything needs to go so we're not poking any screws or anything through the wood.
Now for the part that I feel like we probably could have done better. Let me know if there's some better ways to do this. But I essentially went on the bottom and I lined up the legs and then my dad put a couple screws in the top to hold it together. It wasn't the most perfect thing, but it did work. This is where we're figuring out that the wood was not the right size. What I'm doing right here does not work. We ended up starting over and then we put on that fourth leg. But I honestly think that this template that I made worked really, really well. It's again, not perfect. You're gonna see here in a minute. It's a little wobbly and it doesn't really matter because I'm putting it on carpet and that's just something to keep in mind. But something that we wanted to do to make it a little bit more sturdy was add in a couple of reinforcement pieces. I measured down about six inches and we sort of traced that out. Again, there's probably a way more exact way to do this, but we sort of just went trial and error. We tried things and we just used what worked. And again, this isn't made for like actual sitting. It can hold quite a few pounds. I can sit on it and I can put my heavy backpack on there and everything, but it really does not need to be perfect. And once we got those pieces done, I did sand those down and make them nice and smooth, just like the rest of our other pieces. And we also did put two screws in each one, just in case you're wondering, just to make sure it was nice and reinforced. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I thought I would put two reinforcements on the front and then two on the back that were slightly lower so that we didn't have any problems with screws running into each other. But what we ended up figuring out is that there were like compound angle cuts in between these pieces. It really doesn't look like it. It looks like just a straight across piece. That didn't end up working, so we decided just to put a little block in the middle. And again, we didn't really have exact measurements for this. This was also sort of a compound angle, but we essentially just picked up our scraps, cut them, and we kept on going until we found the right one. It was quite frustrating, not gonna lie, but I think it was the best option and obviously it was less pieces to cut and it just worked really, really well. And next what we're doing here is we're just dressing it with this big old chain that we had in our barn. You can do this, you can not do this. I just really liked the character that it added and it really made it look like it was a vintage piece. And this is what it looks like. I thought it turned out really, really good. Again, just not perfect, very rustic looking, but that was exactly what I was going for. So now we're going to prep to stain it. We are going to take a damp cloth and wipe everything down and we're gonna make sure that dries before we add on our stain and we want to make sure that we just get all the little dust granules all the little wood grains and stuff like that so this is an important step that you definitely should not skip out on And once the stool is all dry, we are gonna go in with our stain. I just used this pine sort of stain. It's just a wood finish. It's actually pretty old. I just found it in our basement and I'm using it on the whole entire thing. So I'm just using a little rag and putting it all over. Now, one thing you're going to notice is as I put this on, the top is a slightly different color than the bottom pieces. I don't really think this is the technical term for it, but the top piece had more of a gray tinge to it. So it did kind of mix with the stain a little bit and switch the color just a tiny bit which I honestly didn't really mind I thought a two-tone color was kind of cool and it looked really unique so just sort of keep that in mind if you want it to be a solid color the same color all throughout make sure you use the same kind of wood so that's just something to keep in mind but honestly I thought that it turned out so so good and I just did one coat of that and I put on this poly acrylic sort of finish to sort of seal everything in it was a semi gloss but you can really choose whatever finish you'd like I just thought it'd be easy to clean if I needed to and it just sealed everything in and I thought it turned out so so good you just let it dry for like 24 to 48 hours and it's usually ready for you to use and you can use this for a little end table at the end of a couch I've seen a lot of designers style them next to a bathtub with a little plant and book on it like I said I'm using it at the end of my bed to just sort of hold some things that are practical like my books and my backpack and stuff like that so I just think it's 
it's such a fun project and I think it was definitely worth it because I saved hundreds of dollars so it was nice that I could make this for a lot less but anyway that is the end of today's video make sure you subscribe you like let me know how you thought this turned out and something that you would do if you would do this same sort of project and I can't wait to see you guys in my next video bye